Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Growing with Fishes podcast. We have a really cool episode this week. We actually have a, a European aquaponic expert with us uh, this week from all the way from Italy. So it'll be a really cool episode for us uh, and to learn from and to learn what's going on over there because we haven't really talked to any of the uh, aquaponic scene over there in Europe yet. So super excited about this episode. Uh, we have uh, Roger with us, uh, as always. How y'all doing? How y'all doing tonight? It's great to be here. And we have Hogmaster back after a couple of week hiatus after his move. How's everybody doing? Uh, Marty will be with us a little later. He had a uh, uh, some stuff going on with his munchkins, and um, a couple of the other guys will be with us a little bit later too. They also had uh, again all everybody seems to be running late. I was running a little late today, and then we had some technical issues. So it seems to be the way of the day. And days are, uh, long. days are longer, <laughs> so the farmers are coming in later. Yep, this is true. Well, thanks a lot for joining us, Julia. Uh, you, you're uh, all the way from Italy. Uh, I, I believe your company is called My Rivendell. Um, uh, well, thanks for joining us. And uh, just a preface: her internet connection isn't the best, so if she cuts out for a second, uh, we, we will. She will be uh, rejoining us right away. Uh, it took us a little bit of time to uh, get everything worked out. Um, so uh, j just preface it with that. So thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm really excited to be, but then. So uh, you guys grow a lot of different exotic talks, you, uh, or different exotic crops, I'm sorry. Uh, you guys have a whole virtual library on your website, and I saw you guys grow saffron, which is uh, really yeah. cool. It's something I haven't seen anyone else grow on aquaponics. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about your farm and uh, some of the different crops that you guys grow? Okay, uh, so um, the first thing is that uh, um, my father uh, was, uh, he, he had a uh, company okay for uh, uh, consultancy and uh, training uh, uh, for the night for the last nine years and um, uh, we worked just in Italy and then uh, we understood that uh, in our country it's too harsh to bring this innovation because of many uh, geopolitical problems and so um, we I, I just decided to um, change uh, the core business of uh, uh, the company and uh, I decided to convert the, uh, the former company in uh, my Rivendell. Uh, my father um, um, had some uh, great insights, um, among which uh, the saffron one. and. Um, he um, worked in partnership uh, with the University of uh, Marke uh, for um, um, the marine aquaponics uh, for uh, um, trial and uh, a survey on marine aquaponics. Uh, um, that okay, uh, the, the results were uh, quite uh, impressive because they they proved that. Uh, uh, there are some animals uh, uh, known as the aurelin uh, that uh, can adapt uh, easily to different uh, uh, salinity levels uh, of water, and so uh, you can uh, you can raise them in brackish water, and so um, farm together with them uh, um, allotids or uh, um, salt tolerant crops. Uh, and this is a huge opportunity, uh, especially in countries where uh, um, there is no uh, access to pure uh, fresh water, but um, uh, the, um, the, um, the, 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 sal the salt levels are higher uh, in the uh, water basins. And so um, at the moment uh, we are we have been uh, implementing uh, this uh, aquaponics training center. We are not uh, interested uh, in production. Uh, we just want to unlock uh, um, the full potential of aquaponics uh, in terms of crops uh, and uh, species uh, that you can farm uh, in aquaponics. Um, because uh, the fact is, uh, um, I, I used to argue many times, uh, with, uh, especially with uh, uh, Americans, uh, because uh, you have like this absurd uh, obsession for salads and uh, leafy greens, 
uh, but uh, in Italy uh, they uh, they don't make uh, economic sense uh, because um, for us uh, it's uh, quite easy to grow uh, whatever in uh, soil without uh, any root problems. Uh, we have uh, a secular tradition of agriculture that uh, it's uh, very, very difficult to uh, innovate uh, uh, because uh, our farmer, our small older farmers uh, are really reluctant to uh, change and to just adapt to the times. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, we, everyone here on this show very much feels the pain of everyone in aquaponics just doing lettuce. And that's why we do this show. And I, well, you're preaching to the choir, and I put a big old smile on my face when you said that. Yeah, yeah so that it, I, I actually don't understand that because uh, uh, also in okay in the aquaponic uh, the Facebook groups on aquaponics. Uh, um, all the time I find someone who said, no, uh, it's uh, um, more uh, profitable to grow salads uh, than uh, saffron. And uh, I am like, in which way? Saffron is more, it's far more expensive than salads. And um, it's quite more difficult to grow saffron than salad. So if you, if you can, uh, um, take advantage of the benefits of aquaponics, just do it. Why just limit it to salad, to grow salad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, I love, yeah, I don't want to go into the peppers. I'm trying to, I grow peppers and I think, you know, that fits really well with aquaponics and I like so, to do peppers too, yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your system? Are you using, you know, wicking beds or raft beds or media beds or, you know, actually, some kind of other hybridization or? Yeah, actually, because we, 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 we um, our aim, aim is to train uh, all the um, kind of the, all the type of systems uh, available and known in the world. Uh, we, we have been implementing uh, like uh, uh, vertical with medium bed or NFT uh, vertical, um, Bumina Dayumina, um, the uh, anacophonic pool, uh, and, and then uh, the, uh, I don't know, uh, we, we want to also, for example, uh, in um, our uh, virtual uh, um, library, we have, uh, we, published these lessons, these three lessons, uh, on uh, apo apocryphal aquaponics. Okay, um, it, was, it was a label that uh, we chose to, um, to make, uh, make clear that uh, uh, there are many other metho methods of aquaponics that uh, people doesn't really doesn't know. Uh, like, for example, the Igamo system, uh, that is uh, the uh, a sort of aquaponics uh, applied uh, to uh, the rice paddies, and uh, in that case uh, you have not only fish and uh, plant rice, but you have also um, uh, the, uh, the ducks, the ducklings that uh, swimming inside the rice paddies, uh, just. Uh, um, help uh, the um, help the soil to be more fertile and they oxygenate it. I also heard that ducks are really great for pest control. I know I, I, here in California they use ducks for for pest control for the grapevines for the vineyards. Yeah. In uh, in Europe, uh, this system uh, is uh, not allowed because uh, we have problems of, uh, we have really strict regulations uh, in terms of uh, uh, how we product, the, the, the practice that we use uh, to pro produce food. And, um, and actually this is uh, uh, um, a, concern, a concern also for aquaponics uh, because uh, um, there is no enough knowledge on this kind of, of system, but I, um, 
studying this sector, I just noticed, noticed that uh, in America, um, in the US, you have like uh, uh, aquaponics uh, um, uh, most uh, uh, promoted, uh, mostly promoted by um, like citizen uh, um, commercial, uh, commercial uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, while in, in Europe, um, aquaponics is aquaponics knowledge is like uh, hugged by the uh, universities. Uh, all, um, there are there there are um, examples of uh, um, urban aquaponics, um, like for example in London, in the uh, surroundings of Lo or of London or uh, in Germany, uh, but. Um, the most of the, uh, the systems are run by uh, university for uh, surveys or trials and and what is uh, funny is that uh, this uh, university doesn't stop each other so like uh, for example uh, i found out that um, in uh, in the netherlands if i don't i am not wrong uh, they are like stud um, for, uh, surviving um the uh, um, the crops cultivation of saffron in aquaponics uh, without knowing that uh, uh, we already prove it uh, and um, i don't know <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's quite a lack of connection and uh, communication effective communication Oh yeah, that's why we started the show originally was uh, people kept telling me and Marty that you couldn't grow flowering crops like squash or pumpkins or tomatoes or peppers or cannabis or a lot of these other stuff and just telling us this doesn't work. And I'm like, well, my garden works great. Like you're wrong and I can prove it to you with pictures. Like, <laughs> of course it, of course it works and this is how you do it. So we, we that's, so that's how we ended up getting started. And uh, you know, it's interesting. So you were talking about the issues with the pathogens uh, potential from, from the ducks. Now um, in the United States, we started doing uh, it work with, um, in fact, there was a university in the United States that was uh, basically hybridizing. Have you guys heard of Korean natural farming yet over in Europe? Uh, what? They, they refer to it as Korean natural farming or KNF. Uh, they use ferments. So they use like um, fermented milk or fermented uh, fermented um, like kimchi or sauerkraut. And they'll take the, the lactic acid based um, uh, ferments and the proteins and enzymes and uh, plant hormones and auxins and things. Um, and, and they go into the, uh, you know, you water them into your plants and it ends up being a very good but bio-safe fertilizer. It's fish safe. In fact, University of Kentucky State proved that lactobacillus actually not only will make your plants grow faster, they'll make your fish grow 15% faster. Oh. Wow. Yep. Wow. Well, no, in fact, um, what, well, what uh, we, the purpose that we have uh, is like uh, um, providing data, okay? Because uh, I uh, I found uh, and uh, okay, my father, okay, uh, is a marine biologist, and uh, he started to know aquaponics on the net, just uh, uh, reading uh, um, different articles and uh, sheets, uh, scientific sheets. Um, and then he decided to bring this innovation in Italy, okay? Uh, but uh, at the first, uh, he just uh, um, began uh, with uh, a cross correlation with the, um, within, uh, no, uh, between uh, all uh, the different uh, um, information that he found on the net, okay? And this was uh, nine years ago uh, that um, in, in Europe, uh, uh, aquaponics was not uh, um, yet known, okay? Um, and um, uh, the, the thing is that uh, um, you, uh, everything that uh, uh, works on, on paper, okay, on, according to uh, statistics, uh, can uh, theoret theoretically uh, work uh, in, uh, in the real. Um, but uh, in this field, uh, because of this uh, uh, separation, I think, uh, between 
university and uh, uh, commercial activities. Uh, the problem is that uh, um, the university uh, can't take the data from the commercial activities that actually run uh, the system. And they just uh, um, publish uh, a lot of uh, information and, and data that uh, are not uh, uh, communicated in a intelligible way. That is to say that uh, if you are an operator or uh, if you are um, a, technic, uh, a, techni a technician and you are already a, an operator of the sector, you can understand what uh, they, they communicate, what they are trying to say to you. But if you are just uh, uh, someone, uh, a beginner, who wants to, um, to start a business in this field, it's quite impossible to um, get uh, this data, for example, on uh, the amount of the yield harvest or uh, on um, uh, the real uh, sustainability on, of aquaponics, uh, because uh, at the end, uh, um, on, uh, on the net, uh, you find uh, like also for hydroponics uh, and uh, for uh, uh, aquaculture rust, uh, you just find, uh, okay, um, it's better yield, uh, better, um, more healthy and um, I don't know, more sustainable, uh, but what it really means, uh, which different, uh, which differences are there are between all these farming practices. Definitely. Um, oh, we got a loop from somebody. Oh, okay. Anyways, um, so why don't you tell us? Um, so you guys have this really cool virtual um, uh, library of different species that you guys have grown. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and some of the other uh, uh, awesome educational work that you guys do over there? Yeah, uh, actually, okay, this uh, virtual library uh, is like, um, okay, um, it's, uh, I think, more uh, a satisfaction of uh, one of my personal uh, needs, because uh, I, uh, I am, like, obsessed with uh, data, information, statistics. Uh, when um, I study something, I, I need always uh, to, like, uh, um, design a scheme uh, and uh, just have a clear schedule of, um, of what I am doing, uh, I am studying. And so, um, because uh, my, my father uh, in uh, these last nine years, uh, he had, um, he provided uh, um, online courses for Italians um, in aquaponics. Uh, but uh, for me, his uh, like uh, his way of communication was too too much. Um, I don't know how to say um, too technical, uh, partly, but uh, uh, especially it was like uh, too talkative. Uh, so I I wanted just to um, create a content in which uh, uh, the main features of uh, for example, the species of animal or uh, crops, or uh, for example, um, the design of the system, um, just the main feature were displayed in a way that uh, I didn't, uh, we uh, actually don't suggest, uh, just don't never just suggest like uh, uh, what is better for you, but because uh, uh, we don't know uh, your project uh, and uh, every uh, project uh, has its own requirement. So we just uh, provide this uh, um, uh, this uh, schematic pattern uh, where you can find the information that you are looking are, um, are you, that you are seeking for, and and then uh, you. Um, making uh, a comparison uh, between uh, uh, one content and one other content, you can choose uh, what uh, it, uh, it fits, what better fits your, uh, um, uh, the requirements of your project. Um, 
this is like something that uh, I learned uh, from my experience and my work because uh, many, many times uh, I just, um, uh, I am contacted by people uh, that uh, um, like uh, listening uh, to the suggestion of uh, uh, other uh, operator in aquaponics uh, um, just, uh, just uh, um, made uh, uh, the things uh, um, mixed up uh, and um, uh, they like this person, uh, these people uh, uh, don't understand why because they say, okay, I, I just, uh, um, it was a tip uh, by an, an expert in aquaponics. So why doesn't it work on my, in my system? And my answer all the time is because the problem is this expert of aquaponics doesn't really know your system. He is, uh, he didn't come uh, to see it. He uh, didn't know all the factors, like for example, uh, the power of your pump, of the pump that you use, uh, the uh, amount of water for uh, the number of grow beds, uh, uh, the, um, I don't know, the, uh, the number of fish, the number of plants uh, in which um, life cycle, uh, cycle stage uh, these crops are. Uh, there are so many factors that, uh, and for example, also um, for uh, the species of fish, uh, crops, uh, but also for uh, the system design, okay? Um, uh, everyone has uh, a preference, okay? Um, someone uh, just want to uh, pro, uh, grow crops. Uh, there is uh, other people like uh, uh, go on uh, uh, repeating to me that uh, the best fish uh, to grow the to grow is uh, like um, uh, the barramundi. Okay, and everything uh, uh, theo theoretically, uh, everything uh, is good. But the thing is that uh, if, uh, for example, okay, I live here in Italy, okay, no one um, consumes, uh, no, there is no uh, market demand for barramundi. We don't know this fish, uh, this fish is uh, an Australian fish. And um, if I want to start uh, an aquaponics business here, uh, it makes no sense to me uh, raise a fish that no one knows and uh, especially that uh, um, to um, purchase it uh, i have like to we we have that same problem in jamaica people didn't know what a tilapia was or a paku they haven't never seen one and they wouldn't eat something they didn't know what it was it, they're people just have this fear of stuff they don't know what it is and they just won't buy it so i i totally agree with you yeah, yeah me too you always have your farm you have to do things on in somewhat indigenous and then not only an indigenous but like you said what the culture wants in the area that you're growing in that's real important because to be successful you have to be able to sell what you grow and yeah. so growing something fancy going oh i'm gonna grow i made that mistake um by going with habaneros uh, even though i could sell them to whole foods absolutely no local market other than shipping them to whole foods and and uh, i'll give it back to you but yeah i agree with that too Steve and Julia. You gotta, you gotta find your local canisteria. Yep. You gotta find out. <laughs> you gotta make your own niche. You your own niche where you can, you, you can provide people with what they can't get that they want. That's what's important. Well, and that's the number one thing I see people do wrong with aquaponics farms is they grow what they're good at growing and not what the market will support. Yeah. Yeah. Number one thing I see people do wrong with aquaponics farms. Yeah. Or any farm, for that matter. And for me, the thing is also okay, that uh, aquaponics. Uh, okay, um, I uh, I don't understand why uh, people don't uh, figure out that uh, aquaponics is not uh, comparable to conventional agriculture. That is to say that uh, if I grow or if I farm anything in aquaponics, okay, um, I, um, the, I can't 
I can't really, so my, my products I can't really compete uh, with the grid distribution because uh, the prices are really low. Uh, most, for example, most of uh, um, in Europe, um, we have this problem, our agriculture, uh, our farmers uh, have this problem of uh, the competition with the developing countries uh, because we, so we, we have like uh, Turkey that uh, uh, export uh, uh, here um, all uh, its uh, grain, uh, not, see, um, rice, wheat, so. Um, in, um, the, the point is uh, if you want really to um, start uh, a thriving uh, aquaponic business, uh, you have to um, plan uh, the value that you are adding, you are uh, providing to your, for your customers. So, for example, if you have the problem with the, uh, the competition, the international competition, um, you have to think, okay, um, uh, aquaponics um, best, better best fits with uh, um, a local market demand. Uh, people, uh, um, the awareness of the customers uh, are, uh, is arising uh, all over the world uh, about uh, on uh, um, the, um, good, uh, the food safety and uh, also the um, carbon impact uh, uh, food carbon impact uh, of uh, the logistics uh, to deliver every time food from uh, different uh, uh, regions or countries. Uh, and so many uh, just pay more um, to have a product that uh, they know, of, of which they know for certain the origin and, and uh, especially that is like uh, um, I don't know, a nearby house. Um, it let them, and uh, another, like, uh, uh, I don't know, a myth of uh, aquaponics uh, is that uh, yeah, he, uh, it needs, uh, it requires uh, uh, an initial, a huge initial investment that uh, uh, is higher than uh, purchasing. Uh, uh, a land, okay, a farmland, and also this myth is not true, uh, not all the times, so because it depends on the aquaponic system design that you are planning to uh, to build. So, for example, uh, this uh, um, uh, this aquaponic system in London, that is uh, its name is uh, Grow Up. Uh, it's uh, like uh, fully automated and uh, it's vertical. Uh, they um, they work. Uh, uh, th their facility is inside a uh, dismissed uh, warehouse, and they like uh, just uh, um, grow micro micro greens and um, tilapia. Uh, and in this case, uh, uh, of course, the system uh, requi has required a huge initial investment. Well, look at it this way too, though. I mean, for a soil farm, if I'm doing anything, well, let's, let's use four acres as an example. What? Because because four acres, the uh, Ouroboros here in Half Moon Bay, California, is a, a, I think they have a total of about 12,000 square feet of grow bed space, 14,000 square, square feet of grow bed space. Uh, it's an, an aquaponics farm. And they produce the same amount of heads of lettuce as a four acre soil farm. Yeah. Now a four acre soil farm would have to buy a tractor and, and irrigation. And by the time you're done those two things, uh, the irrigation for something that size and the tractor equipment and whatever attachments, you're, you're pretty close to the same amount of cost as a greenhouse and a setup that would produce the same amount as 4,000. That's the one way I like to, to explain it to people is depending on the scale you're trying to get to, if you're trying to replicate something like a four acre farm with, you know, <coughs> 14 to 20,000 square feet of grow bed space, be it rafts or media beds or whatever, you're, you're, you're going to spend 
roughly the same amount of money in taxes and and whatever land stuff you run into and, and environmental studies and other junk you have to run into with that much land and you're going to run into uh, and the, the the tractor equipment and the amount of extra labor hours it takes to run that same additional space whereas you know two or three people can run a greenhouse that size you know what i mean for aquaponics it's very low labor intensive and that's one of the biggest things as far as labor per square acre is extremely low in aquaponics compared to some other things uh, at least it's hydroponics yeah, it's a real good point too and because you're like when you say the tractor and the, the common practice of after that like you said attachments you have to have a a, a, a row maker that lays down your you're looking at four or five hundred k just for the tractor oh shoot yeah easy well, yeah just yep yeah um, but uh, what uh, yeah yeah but uh, what uh, i was trying to say is that uh, it depends on the country uh, where you are um, also on the country where you are uh, like starting your uh, activity because for example um yesterday uh, or yeah some days ago i was like reading an article on uh, canada uh, on the female farmers uh, in canada and um, uh, in this article uh, um as uh, in others um it was like uh, um, described the situation of uh, farmland in Canada that uh, like reached uh, uh, um, such a price uh, that uh, it's quite unaffordable for anyone uh, to uh, buy an actor of, of uh, farmland and so um, uh, it was interesting because uh, in fact uh, uh, the, the women um, uh, uh, differently from men uh, just uh, use uh, less space uh, to grow, but uh, in a smarter way. And so they uh, mostly uh, in deploy like vertical systems uh, and they um, just find uh, creative solutions uh, for uh, um, producing uh, much more with uh, less uh, resources. I think, um, but well, it's uh, typical in Europe and third world, like Africa, and too. Yeah, that you have to create systems with a lot less resources. Isn't that what you were saying just there? You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, the Gumina Dayumina uh, is a system that was uh, that is, has been developed in uh, Indonesia, and uh, this is uh, a system that is like peculiar to uh, that country because they just uh, um, um, take advantage of uh, the climate conditions of the country. And, uh, um, and this is one of the few systems uh, that uh, are outdoor, because uh, um, in, uh, in this country, uh, the weather, the temperature are always high and they are steady. Uh, during uh, throughout the year um, and so in this case uh, this is a system uh, really really cheap uh, but it's big uh, and uh, uh, can satisfy uh, the needs uh, the, the food needs uh, of uh, uh, entire family and uh, community um, and it is made like uh, with a pool uh, that is uh, inside this um, it's like um, you know, a, a normal pool in the ground uh, with uh, um, has grow beds. Uh, there are pots uh, that are connected uh, one another um, with the plants uh, and uh, like uh, expandable clay uh, inside. Um, it's um, um, if we we can just think uh, out of the box uh, and imagine uh, all uh, the types of aquaponics uh, that uh, we can develop uh, adapting them to uh, the specific situation of each country. Um, you will see that uh, actually aquaponics can be a real solution to the food issue and to produce uh, more uh, the 
with, with less resources, uh, uh, with uh, a slight uh, uh, foot carbon uh, impact. Uh, um, I don't know. I I am like uh, uh, foreseeing in this uh, um, in this innovation and this practice uh, like uh, a hope for my country because uh, I know if you already okay if you um, uh, know something about uh, my about Italy, but uh, uh, we. Uh, we are we are struggling uh, with this uh, economic crisis, uh, uh, and uh, we are uh, more cro um, closer to uh, Greece uh, than uh, uh, to uh, other European countries in terms of uh, uh, amount of, pop of poverty and uh, unemployment rate. And so, um, I am thinking uh, to aquaponics uh, as. Uh, also an opportunity to uh, like create uh, job opportunities uh, um, for um, people that just uh, lost their their job when uh, uh, when they are um, so um, like 50 so they are considered already old uh, or also for uh, the migrants, uh, because we, we we are plenty of migrants. That's awesome. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I understand that you're going into migrants, so you're doing a lot of more like that. As much as uh, not activism, but philanthropy is part of your mission, too. Yeah. You know, you want to help people and like hungry people and like you went. Yeah, that kind of hit me right there when you're you know, talking about. Yeah, I guess we look at. I mean, we, we, it's crazy around the world with refugees, you know, yeah. and most people don't think about it. I lived in Turkey for a while and I've been to Italy. So I understand a little bit about the culture there, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> and, and, I mean, I don't think I'd be welcome in Turkey right now. So, you know, or, <laughs> or I'm not sure about Italy, you know, so, um, yeah, but but I loved it. I, I loved it. I was that, that I got that experience, you know. So I I understand the Mediterranean a little bit, and uh, you know Greece and Turkey and all you know all that stuff. Cyprus. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, all the problem mm. with migrants and refugees, okay, is the, that that uh, people uh, uh, Italians, okay, are uh, getting um, are becoming uh, really racist uh, because uh, you know when there is poverty uh, and there is uh, unemployment rate uh, an high unemployment rate uh, and uh, um, people just uh, don't see an end to this uh, uh, night no to this darkness uh, there is always uh, uh, the, the politicians always like uh, um, run the uh, the sites the opportunity occasion to um to make um to uh, uh, instigate uh, to spur on uh, the hatred of people uh, against other people uh, that are who are like them okay taking advantage of the situation yeah Man. yeah in fact and uh, um the problem is that in uh, uh, these migrants uh, can't work here okay because uh, uh they don't have uh, the papers uh, uh, the identification paper because uh, um, they, they can just work as, as, um, as slaves and um, uh, you know in, in 10,000 migrants uh, are uh, uh, in slavery in, uh, in Italy just uh, in the agriculture field so we, we just exploit them for uh, um, our in uh, internal uh, national production, okay? Um, and the thing is that if we can provide them uh, with uh, um, a dignified job, okay? Uh, they can produce something for their families, okay? Uh, and I think that for anyone, it's really important to feel uh, that uh, it's uh, that is able to uh, nourish uh, his family. These, these are people that come from countries that in which uh, uh, the men mainly are 
the uh, um, yeah the of like yeah. They, they would they are the only workers okay and so right. uh, um, reaching our coast um, they, uh, asking here for seeking here for a refuge and then uh, just stay um, without uh, doing anything because no one uh, just just uh, offer them uh, a work or uh, just uh, like also um, <laughs> I don't know, it's not just a fact of money. Uh, in this case, they don't need money. They, they just need to uh, feel that uh, they are able to... Um, they need to have purpose. The uh, ...of uh, their families. Yeah, they need to have purpose. And by you giving them a job growing food, they can they can grow some food and have leftover, take some home and maybe sell it in the market or something. But their family would have food, they'd feel pride. Yeah. And they wouldn't yes, feel yes. useless, right? That's what you yeah, yeah. Fact, especially because um, uh, they don't like our food, okay? And, and it's normal, yeah. it's yeah. completely different. <laughs> and uh, here at the end, um, most of them uh, go to buy uh, their food uh, by others, uh, other African people, okay? But most of the owners of these. Um, a small business, uh, small shops, uh, just for African, uh, are uh, um, are involved in the trafficking of human beings. So at the end, these people are always controlled by someone else that want to exploit them. Well, you definitely, I can definitely see how passionate you are about this for sure. <laughs> <laughs> your your speech slowed down and you much more you know clear voiced when you were talking about this you were very passionate without a doubt uh, i guess we hijacked the aquaponics show there for a minute there uh, but we got i think we're all glad to give you a voice because we don't hear about this usually uh some of us might watch bbc or german journal and see something about italy but you know we don't see a lot about that you know what's going on with that and it's yeah. a it's a unbelievable with all the things about slavery going on that you feel slavery is going on in your own country right now that's, that's yeah, yeah. Wow. we are uh, a really isolated uh, country and uh, this is also why uh, it's so difficult uh, to um to spread the knowledge of uh, aquaponics uh, in italy because um it's it's really like uh, the sometimes uh, <laughs> no many times when i like speak with uh, uh, Foregener, okay, uh, I just feel uh, like, uh, I don't know, a um, uh, man of uh, old age, like I am not advanced, uh, advanced like uh, uh, you. Um, also, for example, okay, English, uh, the net, uh, all these things uh, for uh, uh, you are like normal for us, uh, uh, it's like uh, a great goal uh, that we reached. Um, <laughs> and the same is aquaponics. Uh, aquaponics, uh, uh, after uh, nine years uh, that my father worked on the field, um, we just, uh, just like one, uh, one uh, small business uh, is uh, uh, was active uh, and then uh, they just throw everything uh, away, um, but no, no, no other uh, small um, uh, facility, no other facility just um, uh, started uh, out to work. Um, there is, um, it's all scattered and um, people uh, uh, want uh, certainties uh, that we can, we can do uh, we can uh, give them because uh, when like uh, Italians uh, tend to be um, they need always uh, to uh, have certainty or what they do so uh, if you if you haven't proved uh, proven something they just say okay I don't want to invest my money in uh, this project because actually there is no other um, 
no no other business uh, that uh, show that uh, this is a uh, work pro uh, project. Um, and when we mm, just tried uh, to um, make them uh, to show them uh, the um, um, the, the uh, aquaponics business uh, or businesses uh, uh, around the world, they were just okay. But here in Italy, there is nothing uh, of the kind. Um, it's it's impossible to like innovate a field when you refuse to uh, experiment the innovation because no one uh, has done it before. It becomes like. Yeah, it becomes like a religion and they won't refuse to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. So I was at a conference in Oregon a couple of weeks ago and there was a guy and he's red butted. We're going to get him on the show. I got his email. At some point, he's going to come on his show. He's affection Dutch knows he's affectionately known as Cowboy. And this guy was Republican, red butted. He's the last guy you thought you'd ever see at a cannabis, you know, grow convention. And here he was soaking up every bit of information and using that for his cattle fields to grow all the grass. And he was getting increased fertility on his cattle. He was slashing his costs on that. And just the, all around his business, his farm was producing over, you know, producing much more uh, on, on all levels uh, just because of, of a few small changes and just changing the way that he managed his land. And, it, it, those are the kind of ways that you know in, in urban environments it can be aquaponics but you know if you're doing you know 80,000 acres you're obviously not going to try to do aquaponics you're going to do but something more sustainable for that size of acreage but um, you know moving everyone towards those kinds of things and trying to think you know getting everyone towards that permaculture kind of method be it uh, maybe a different uh, version of what people generally consider as permaculture but sustainable culture I guess maybe is a better way to put it yeah. No, um, like, uh, for example, here, okay, uh, in Italy, there is no, um, okay, we, we are a peninsula, so uh, we have sea uh, everywhere around us, okay, but uh, uh, aquaculture is not uh, developed. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, really uh, difficulty in finding someone who produce, uh, uh, who raise, uh, uh, fish uh, of any kind um, and crayfish, uh, especially crayfish, uh, we we practically uh, import uh, everything, uh, every animal uh, from uh, I don't know East Europe uh, or uh, France, uh, uh, North Europe. Uh, um, there is little of um, of our inner production. Um, what what fish uh, are you guys growing, or do, do what fish do people grow in aquaponics, say in Europe or in Italy specifically, but yeah, just in uh, Europe uh, in general? Okay, uh, actually, in uh, um, for example, here in, um, in yeah, also in Europe, okay, I saw that uh, most of people uh, uh, just uh, raise uh, tilapia, but uh, in Italy we don't really uh, are used to tilapia. So, for example, we um, we have catfish, uh, especially yeah. in the regions of uh, North Italy. Uh, so, for example, we, we raise the uh, catfish, uh, and uh, uh, at the moment uh, we, we have been raising uh, uh, koi carps because uh, they are uh, they have a great um, uh, value after like uh, uh, three four years. Uh, they reach uh, the price of like uh, um, between uh, 1,000 and 500 and uh, 2,000 and 500 of euro, uh, depending that's, on. That's the, nice. That's yeah, better than we get. <laughs> yeah, depending on the quality of uh, uh, of the species, um, the of the uh, crossing crossing like uh, uh, chosen and um, and then uh, sergeants um, um, effectively like sergeants uh, few people uh, um, raise uh, the Italian sergeants because it's like uh, quite disappeared uh, it's protected 
um, in our case, we, we have raised like uh, uh, the um, Russian, uh, the Siberian Sargon. Are you doing a uh, Huso Huso or? Huh? What, what's the Latin name? Um, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. For sure. Yeah, we. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I used to care for a, a guy in uh, Pennsylvania, and he had two of every species of sturgeon that was uh, okay. currently known. El, el, um, the starlet, the starlet. Sure, sure. The starlet. Si, uh, as you can say, starlet. Okay, okay. However, we, we have raised also the uh, Archipenser Galden Galden Okay. Um, and so, and uh, the, we, we have tried uh, many species, and the Archipenser Rutenus. Uh, oh, these are cool. the three species we, we have raised. Um, uh, we actually, we uh, we faced uh, uh, many problems uh, with this kind of this uh, species uh, to raise uh, because uh, uh, this uh, here was really strange uh, in terms of weather. Uh, we had uh, um, uh, a cold winter uh, with that uh, just lo uh, just looked like uh, uh, it wasn't uh, ending. Um, we had some sudden changes of temperature, and these animals are really, really sensitive to uh, changes of temperature. They, they are quite, uh, um, they are, um, they produce like a, a sort of, um, uh, yeah. um, they, um, good toxin. One moment. One moment. Yeah. I, I check. Maybe a hormone, maybe? No. Uh, slime. Oh, slime? slime. Right. Milma. No. Uh, oh, oh, drool. Home. Biofilm? Like a, biofilm? Uh, like a slime uh, coat? Uh, it's... Um, um, Excretion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and they produce it uh, uh, from... Uh, the um, um, skin uh, mm -hmm. to protect uh, um, themselves uh, from this uh, uh, stress. Yep. Uh, but at the end, uh, when they produce like too much of this uh, foam, or this foam uh, they, um, uh, I think that they just have problems of breathing, uh, at the breathing too. Yeah, they can't breathe. Uh, breathe. And so, um, uh, at the end, uh, uh, they they die because they they can't reach enough uh, um, enough air. Uh, they need to be uh, fully aerated uh, to like uh, wash away all this uh, foam. Um, and so they actually we we lost. Uh, uh, every one of them, because uh, we didn't have yet uh, uh, the case. Uh, the, we had okay. Uh, at the moment, uh, I am not uh, in uh, Tuscany, in, Tus okay, in Tuscany, where uh, we have this aquaponics uh, training center. But uh, I am uh, in, um, in my apartment uh, in uh, Falconara Marittimo, Okay, and uh, we we have been uh, moving uh, like. For uh, this last uh, uh, four or five months, and so um, un uh, until uh, now, uh, many animals uh, just remained here in uh, some um, uh, aquaponic system that we had um, on the and that we kept on the rooftop uh, on our rooftop. Um, these uh, sergeants uh, were uh, transferred uh, in uh, our garage, and uh, we tried like to um, keep the steady conditions, uh, but uh, it was quite impossible because it was not the uh, 
the perfect uh, situation, okay? Um, then other, other animals uh, are, um, okay, um, uh, we have uh, Turkish crayfish. Um, actually, they come from Greece. I don't know why they, their name is Turkish, but they are not Turkish. Um, and now I have uh, um, some juveniles uh, that um, were born uh, this at the beginning of the spring, uh, and they are really cute. <laughs> they, uh, they are uh, getting used to be alone uh, without uh, uh, the mothers. Um, and we, we, we hope uh, that uh, um, they will, uh, most of them uh, will survive uh, and they will uh, uh, grow uh, Fastly, because actually uh, Turkish crawfish uh, are um, enough fast to go. Um, we we have also um, uh, the crawfish, the red uh, red crayfish, the Louisiana crayfish, um, because in, in Italy we we are we like uh, our uh, crayfish. Uh, are um, quite uh, are near to extinction uh, because of the invasion of uh, the red one. Um, and uh, in, in Europe, uh, uh, there is this uh, gap of regulation because it, so it's quite complicated to understand what you have to do with this, uh, how you have to deal with these animals because uh, Europe just say, okay, every country uh, manage the problem as they want. And for example, in France, uh, there are some um, regions uh, that uh, allow to um, fish the stray fish or uh, to capture them, uh, to other to um, breed them, uh, other just uh, other um, in other regions, uh, it's like uh, impossible and you have to in, in, theoretically, you, are, you should just uh, kill them if you see them. In Italy, um, it's uh, quite different. Uh, actually, um, we, we have some uh, lakes uh, where uh, uh, we, are, we, have, we are plenty of uh, uh, this crayfish population of this crayfish. And so uh, many fishermen just uh, um, partner together uh, together uh, in uh, cooperatives uh, to sell uh, these uh, um, live animals uh, to people uh, who, want, who can um, grow them or raise them or maybe just feed them. Um, it's a, it's a real problem because um, actually, if you have all, uh, uh, if you are invaded by these animals, okay, uh, and uh, um, they are not uh, autochthonous, they are not indigenous, but uh, at the same time, it's uh, like years, uh, uh, like uh, I think more than 30 years that they are here. Uh, there is no no reason to not just exploit them. Because if you don't exploit them, their population just will increase. Because there, here in Italy, there is no natural predator for these crayfish. Uh, they they are, um, they uh, destroy uh, our populations of indigenous crayfish uh, because of the um, disease uh, that uh, uh, they they brought the the the, the, um, the, the disease uh, uh, that uh, they are uh, immune from. Allora. Agria. Uh, Agria. Uh, Anno, ecco. Um, the crayfish plug. 
this uh, this 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 uh, disease uh, of uh, um, uh, that uh, destroy our fish that was not uh, uh, known here in Italy. Okay, uh, is the crayfish plug and the Louisiana red crayfish, uh, Procambarus plarki. Uh, they are resistant to this uh, uh, disease, while uh, our crayfish are not. Uh, and uh, overall, uh, they uh, they need they require really low temperature in uh, lakes, uh, rivers, uh, and so on of water. And so, for example, uh, it's uh, really harsh to um, to raise them in in a pen for the recuperation. So what are the primary um, uh, crops that you guys are growing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis now as far as um, uh, at your farm there? And then what are some of the more common vegetable crops grown in Europe in aquaponics? Uh, actually, now uh, we, we are waiting for the... Um, okay, we, we just uh, put uh, in... Um, produced in our uh, systems at the moment uh, just the common... Uh, um veggies uh, like uh, uh, okay strawberry uh, but also uh, watermelon okay and uh, uh, we we uh, audio the garden veggies uh, uh, like for example uh, uh, the cabbage now the, the kale and um, um, the um, uh, tomatoes, uh, all uh, this stuff, but uh, uh, we are waiting like uh, um, by the 15th of uh, uh, June, uh, we will uh, uh, introduce um, um, the, we will introduce saffron, uh, berries, like uh, uh, blueberries and raspberries, and also we want to try the goji berries, um, and then uh, uh, we want to uh, start, we want to introduce in another system uh, that is um, going to be uh, activated. Um, we want to introduce uh, aloe vera. Um, and um, uh, uh, for, uh, for what concert AMP, okay, we want to try industrial AMP, but uh, uh, it, it's uh, like uh, uh, um, it's not so much so much time that uh, uh, the new law is passed uh, um, for uh, that regulates uh, the uh, cultivation of hemp by uh, private. Uh, so we want uh, uh, first to understand how it works and then uh, uh, just go ahead. Awesome. So, is there any? Um, what are you guys using uh, as far as any additives? Are you just using adjusting your pH, or uh, are you adding anything else, or do you have any kind of tips or tricks for people uh, starting off? Uh, actually, the, the only tips that I can uh, provide for people is like uh, um, uh, when when you have a problem with the, the pH or uh, uh, some other parameter. Just uh, not uh, um, try to be not, not see not try to be a um, magician or a, a, a crazy uh, scientist who uh, the um, the dosage is really important uh, to um, to rest, uh, to stabilize um, a system okay and. Um, uh, my father, the, the, the trick of my father is uh, when uh, he doesn't understand what is uh, going, on, going on in his systems, um, he just uh, um, exchange 50% uh, um, of the, the water of the fish tank uh, for one, uh, the first week. And then the second week, the other 50% uh, 
and uh, uh, monitor if uh, there, there are uh, any changes. And uh, usually uh, just uh, doing that, uh, he is able to um, uh, eliminate uh, uh, any, any kind of, uh, I don't know, of uh, external factor that uh, uh, just make, uh, make the, the system um, crazy. Uh, and another another trick is uh, ventilate your plants uh, if you work indoor, because uh, um, the, the aeration is really important um, to avoid uh, the mold uh, and to avoid uh, uh, like um, uh, root rot. Um, at the end, uh, I think that uh, aquaponics is really easy. Uh, to manage an aquaponic system is easy, easy uh, to manage for anyone. The thing is that is that uh, as for everything else, if you have uh, the right know-how, if you study, if you uh, learn how to uh, like uh, assemble information from uh, different sources, um, at the end. Um, you 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 will uh, of course succeed. That sounds oh, yeah. great. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. If we could just get everybody to cooperate. <laughs> um, is there anything else you wanted to bring up? Uh, I know you, uh, before you go. Um, generally, we we end up the the guest segment in about five minutes. But if you want to talk about anything else, we're more than happy to have you. Since you're especially since you're all the ways away, but. Um, uh, is, is there anything else you want to mention? I know you mentioned about uh, community and how aquaponics can really help build a, a sense of community in places. Did you want to touch on that as well? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I want us to say that. Uh, okay, uh, I, um, I, uh, as I wrote you, okay, uh, I am not uh, an aquaponics expert. Uh, my father is. Uh, I am just. Uh, um, I am just studying uh, uh, what. Why aquaponics is not uh, like uh, widely spreading uh, around the world? Why, uh, after all these years, that uh, uh, is uh, um, known this uh, uh, farming practice, uh, uh, just few people uh, um, still know it. Um, and also, um, my my commitment is towards uh, uh, the small older. Uh, farmers, okay, uh, especially uh, Italian ones, uh, that uh, uh, as I uh, already said, uh, uh, they are really reluctant uh, to uh, change uh, um, their uh, traditions, okay. But I think that aquaponics can be uh, an opportunity to preserve uh, tradition for innovation. Um, in um, in my in our uh, um, cottage and farmlands uh, in Tuscany. Okay, um, we we want to show, we want to prove uh, that uh, aquaponics uh, is not just a fact of um, the increase of production, but it can be uh, a, um, an excuse, uh, a source of tourism. It can be um, it can be integrated. Uh, with other farming practices, uh, uh, like for example, <laughs> I I I am a passion I am passionate about males, and so I am uh, I am defining uh, how to um, how to uh, raise these males, and uh, I am like projecting um, micro micro systems, uh, micro aquaponic system, uh, including uh, also these nails, but these are just systems for uh, um, ornamental systems like like uh, micro gardens. Uh, uh, not for escargot? Uh, no, 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 for you. <laughs> no. That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> uh, I am focused on uh, the uh, indigenous, uh, uh, snails uh, like uh, Elix aspersa, Ebania, Vermiculata, and uh, others that uh, 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 they are part uh, of our uh, 
uh, food tradition. Um, and also, okay, uh, for me, aquaponics uh, is also like a uh, uh, lifestyle because it's a way to uh, slow uh, things. Uh, um, we, we, we just live in this fast-paced world uh, where uh, you, you have no time to process anything that uh, occurs to you. Uh, you have like uh, always to uh, show to others, so also always to be visible. Uh, and I want to, um, I don't know, to preserve the farmer tradition of my country, that is to uh, just uh, um, follow the time of uh, natural, uh, of natural uh, uh, sources, uh, natural um, living beings. Um, uh, we in uh, in this uh, in uh, Mary Vendel, we also have like um, um, uh, um, wood, um, like a forest. Forest. Yeah. 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 Uh, Woods. Woodland. Woods. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a uh, uh, woodland, and uh, uh, I want to. Um, to explain uh, all the and to try to grow in aquaponics uh, the plants that uh, uh, this, the types of plants uh, that are wild that they grow wild in this uh, uh, wood. Um, so for me, it's not just a matter of aquaponics; it's a question of how I can integrate uh, more uh, aspects uh, of uh, the farming activities, uh, of the farming life, uh, style of life, um, of the, uh, our farming traditions. That's great. That's great. That's kind of how I feel about it. You do have to do it the way you can do it. And a lot of people that have been on the show lately have been about that too, forming a like uh, like uh, Steve was mentioning earlier, a permaculture or something along with you know, allow to allow your aquaponics to amend to that, or you know you've got your systems to grow your vegetables and your saffron, but then you can also use it and plumb it off in different parts in woodlands or wherever else, and every all the culture will sustain better. And you know even with like Steve mentioned the lactobacillus, that's exactly how you get started doing that. That in the indigenous microorganisms will really get you where those you, you can take advantage of everything out there um, in your on your on your property or you know and, and help other people sustain by teaching them these simple methods to get you know how to get started in the first place yeah, yeah. for example uh, what uh, concern um, um, okay. information interesting information about uh, what concern uh, cannabis okay in Italy uh, we are allowed just to uh, now just to buy um, light cannabis uh, that is like uh, cannabis uh, with uh, a lower THC um, and uh, uh, we have uh, many um, uh, really uh, several um, people uh, who are suffering of uh, uh, chronic diseases uh, or who are uh, um, they, they can't walk, uh, they, um, they suffer continuously, okay, and uh, uh, the, the drugs uh, with the cannabis uh, could uh, really heal them, could uh, um, uh, at least uh, like uh, um, stop, prevent their suffering, uh, stop their suffering. Uh, but um, uh, just uh, our uh, army, um, research uh, uh, structure, okay, research uh, facility uh, can grow, uh, la uh, can grow this kind uh, of uh, cannabis for uh, uh, the drugs uh, to, um, uh, to sell uh, in, um, in the pharmacy. And so uh, the problem is that the, the, the production is uh, not sufficient uh, for uh, 
everyone and uh, just uh, um, few of them are uh, really have really access uh, to this kind of pure um, while uh, other producers of uh, light cannabis uh, they grow uh, outdoor cannabis and so uh, they lose uh, uh, many crops uh, because of uh, weather conditions, because of um, animals and so on. Um, and uh, we have this uh, big uh, um, company that is, uh, um, that, uh, is um, for business uh, is on uh, distribution uh, and they um, the demand is not uh, doesn't correspond to the uh, actual uh, supply because our farmers uh, don't want to understand that uh, if they want to increase uh, their production uh, it's uh, um, a recommendable idea to grow indoors oh yeah yeah so you have total climate control, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, especially in this year, like uh, last summer, uh, we we were hit by drought, and uh, for uh, uh, the whole summer, um, it never uh, rained. Uh, this we this winter uh, was too cold, and uh, um, in uh, the the last uh, uh, week of March, that for us is okay, uh, spring. Um, yeah, there was uh, a snowfall that uh, uh, lasted for uh, uh, one week, one whole week. And so uh, most of the farmers, uh, of Italian farmers, just uh, lost their crops, uh, their um, uh, spring crops. Um, the, the, the only that uh, took advantage of uh, this situation were uh, the, um, the uh, farmers of um, um, of um, of mushrooms because uh, uh, the um, the snow uh, after it was uh, more than snow was uh, uh, um, of a layer of, of ice on the soil, uh, just um, uh, making make it wet. And so uh, it was uh, perfect for uh, the blooming of mushrooms. So maybe this summer they will uh, harvest uh, uh, a lot. Wow. Yeah, it gets pretty cold in Northern Italy, doesn't it? I mean... What? It gets it gets pretty cold in northern Italy. Yeah, yeah, but I am not in north. Uh, I am in the center, and um, I, actually, um, uh, this situation was like uh, everywhere in Italy. Uh, it's the, the climate change yeah. is uh, really affecting our uh, season, the, the course of our seasons. So uh, we we are not used. Uh, to a weather, to, to a such a unpredictable weather. Um, it's, uh, I think that uh, in, uh, in these uh, last years, uh, um, there was, it was uh, much, much more sunny in London and in England in general uh, that's here in Italy. Which is opposite, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nasty in England and nice in Italy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I just thing, thought about. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. The, the same situation is uh, occurred uh, in Spain. Uh, it's like uh, um, this this year, uh, most of the of the, they lost uh, most of the crops uh, because of the uh, cold weather, like the low temperature and the uh, extreme weather conditions. So. Um, and also, um, um, furthermore, uh, we we had uh, uh, this situation with the uh, earthquake. So um, many of uh, the farmers 
that um, uh, are uh, in uh, that uh, worked uh, in uh, the area the areas hidden uh, by the um, by the earthquake. Uh, now they just they are just without job. They um, the the government uh, is not helping them uh, in. Uh, regenerating uh, their uh, businesses <laughs> well that that's because you say your your countries and well we, a lot of countries are in economic crisis right now so that's yeah, part yeah. Of that. yeah yeah i had the same problem you're talking about the crazy weather we had snow here i live in the southeast and we had snow here and if we get snow it's usually some weird time in the spring but yeah. last year we actually had it in the winter and it it and if it does snow it's always melted by three in the afternoon 3 p.m or uh 1500 i'm not sure how what you go by time was um uh and and uh, this year we had snow that stayed on the ground frozen for five days mm. i live in a place that never even snows all year for years and then we had five days of frozen snow this year so yeah there's something weird going on in the climate there's no doubt about that yeah, yeah. It's, it's the reason why, um, together with Alphaphonics, uh, I promote uh, the farming indoor because uh, actually I, I really, I really think that it's uh, the only possibility to uh, not uh, reduce the risk of crops loss and uh, uh, to to be uh, climate re resilient. I love that. We all love that. That's what <laughs> I, I think we all agree with that. Yeah. I, I was going to ask about uh, sun quality. Do you guys get good sun quality there? Like, is there a big greenhouse scene? Uh, uh, I didn't understand the question. I uh, think we can help a little bit first, Josh. There's not, I don't think there is a big greenhouse scene because they're all traditional farmers. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, there so is that. No, there, there who's is asking no, about sunlight, Julia? Is how how is the sunlight quality during a day on a day to day basis? You get yeah. Long? So, for instance, in uh, in the central part of uh, the United States, it's very cold, but it's also in the winter. But it's also very sunny, and it's a big uh, cut flower industry there because of the sun quality. Even though it's like it can be, you know, zero degrees, uh, negative twenty. There's so much sun that it, it works out. And so, like, as you were just talking about, I was just curious, you know, about, you know, yeah, the, okay. on the high value crops, you know. Yeah, actually, the, the problem, uh, the, the reason why farmers are so reluctant to change, to convert uh, to indoor and aquaponics or hydroponics and so on, uh, is that uh, our climate uh, weather, uh, our climate conditions, uh, 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 were uh, quite perfect. Uh, uh, we uh, we are known uh, the the Italian the made in Italy uh, food uh, is known uh, uh, all over the globe uh, for uh, its quality because uh, we have a really uh, secular uh, long uh, tradition uh, in farming. Uh, so um, all our products uh, are really excellent. Um, and when when I try to like uh, explain that uh, um, it's um, a, a solution to inc to increase uh, the supply uh, the food supply the internal food supply uh, is to grow indoor. Uh, people just answer me, okay, but uh, um, the quality of food of our food depends on uh, the sun depends on the nutrients uh, in the soil uh, depends on the water that you use, uh, but uh, the, the, the truth is that, uh, for example, uh, in South Italy, uh, South Italy is like the, the real center of food production, uh, of uh, made in Italy food production. Um, and uh, yeah. in South Different. Italy, we have really uh, great areas uh, were um, uh, contaminated uh, by um, pollution uh, by okay um, 
our uh, mafia just um, uh, criminal organization, okay, uh, uh, just uh, um, buried uh, uh, under the ground uh, a lot of uh, um, of waste, okay, of uh, chemical waste, uh, dangerous, and so uh, we have uh, great areas um, that can't produce anymore because uh, the the veggies uh, and uh, I don't know, uh, mozzarella, um, uh, the um, milk, uh, and so on. Uh, the all the dairy, the dairy products uh, are contaminated, and so many children uh, in these areas just die of cancer because uh, they uh, they ate uh, the milk of their mother that was contaminated by the products that she. Um, she ate before, um, so um, actually, soil is not more uh, an option for for us as well as uh, sun. Uh, for example, uh, this um, this last month uh, we delayed uh, a lot on our schedule to implement uh, our aquaponics uh, training center. Uh, exactly because of the weather condition because um, it just uh, uh, went on, on uh, after the snow it just uh, go, go on it went on uh, raining 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 and we have been um, we, we have been implementing um, the greenhouses uh, uh, on soil actually on farmland so uh, it, there, there is, I don't know, when, when uh, it rains too much, uh, it's difficult to build <laughs> something on wet soil, on wet ground. Um, we, we are losing um, an absurd amount of uh, soil, of ground, because of uh, erosion. Erosion. Indiscriminate uh, um, construction of uh, um, abusive, uh, not allowed uh, buildings, uh, house. <coughs> um, unfortunately, uh, also our farming field um, is um, uh, endangered by um, by the, um, the by our. Uh, establishment uh, and uh, uh, in partnership uh, with uh, our uh, criminal, uh, criminal organiza organization. Awesome. So, um, uh, is there anything else you want to tell uh, tell everyone before we wrap uh, wrap up your segment, or do you want to tell people how to find you online or how they could? Um, Come out to you guys. I know you guys do educational classes and stuff. Do you, do you want to tell people yeah, how to find it? We are not, but okay. Um, we um, we are um, uh, working. Okay, we are uh, designing uh, classes uh, on site uh, in, uh, in in Tuscany. Okay, uh, this summer uh, <laughs> we we just accept a few um, um, uh, few sub submission because uh, actually. We, we want to and to work to conclude uh, the, all the facilities. Um, so uh, at the moment, uh, we, we have been receiving uh, uh, most um, um, uh, questions from, um, from Italians. Uh, while uh, on, uh, on the net, uh, we have this uh, virtual library uh, that uh, have some free lessons uh, and uh, other that are just for uh, premium members. Um, but this virtual library is not a course. Uh, it's like uh, um, the, the, the library of my dreams, uh, where uh, um, everyone that is like younger like me uh, for uh, data and detailed information can find them without uh, uh, making uh, 
uh, beyond traveling uh, as I, I, I have done uh, to find them, uh, to cross correlate uh, every information on uh, every website uh, and uh, uh, scientific sheet on the net. Um, the last thing uh, that is that, that, that is just that <laughs> um, all, uh, no, the 20 percentage of uh, um, the profits uh, will be uh, devoted uh, to uh, training the social uh, social training programs for uh, uh, the vulnerable uh, communities uh, and groups uh, that um, uh, here in Italy. Um, because uh, as I as I said, uh, for me aquaponics uh, is uh, a, a way to spur on uh, social innovation, and uh, I I hope to uh, create. Uh, uh, opportunities for my fellow countrymen, uh, despite the fact that uh, uh, they are so uh, conservatorist and, uh, 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 and so I, I, I saw this mine is uh, actually a social impact business. Uh, I am interested in profits, but just because I want to invest them in. Uh, scientific research and trading programs for people that uh, uh, really um, can uh, change their future, uh, adding the right know-how to, uh, to grow uh, their fortune. If you, uh, as long as you, you keep building with the young folks, the young kids and the young people, the younger people, that's how you, that's how that change has to come about because you know, the older farmers should really, some of them will give in, but most won't. But the only way we're going to keep farms alive and grow food is really to sell it to the young people in the world. That's without a doubt. Yeah, this is right. But in Italy, uh, most of um, uh, of the farmers are old. Uh, we have really right. few uh, young people who work in the field. Um, however, uh, um, another information is just that uh, uh, we are already um, uh, starting to collaborate uh, with uh, um, farmers uh, in Tuscany uh, because uh, they 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 uh, had uh, many uh, troubles uh, these years uh, and they lost a lot of crops and so now uh, uh, at least uh, we, uh, we I don't know. Uh, and uh, one among them uh, is interested uh, in uh, creating with us uh, a network uh, with all the other farmers uh, to use uh, uh, to convert uh, their uh, farmlands, uh, arable lands, uh, in uh, aquaponic in integrated systems. Okay, uh, also with aquaponics. Um, in this way, when uh, people will come to see us, uh, they'll, um, they'll have the occasion to, um, to make like a tour for uh, all, all uh, the nearby uh, aquaponic facility that uh, we will create. Fantastic. That's great. I want uh, to step forward. Well, thank you so much. Um, again, do you want to tell people how to, uh, what your website is or any other info on how to find you? Uh, uh, my website is www. <laughs> I am not, I am not used. <laughs> um, however, it's my um, hyphen. Uh, item. Hyph hyphen. Hyphen. Okay, hyphen. Uh, Rivendell. Uh, dot com um, and uh, uh, you can find me on um, Facebook. I, I don't really like so much Facebook, but uh, you can find it me here uh, and on Pinterest uh, and uh, on uh, Medium, where uh, I am like uh, the only person who talk of or who writes of a <laughs> Well. All the others who just write uh, about how to be successful and happy life. 
Yep. And if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast or or the video versions, uh, it, the website is in the description as well to make it easy for you. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Uh, thanks yep. for the invitation. It was really a uh, honor. And uh, um, I apologize for my pronunciation and my problems. <laughs> oh, no, it's, no, it's great. We enjoy hearing from uh, growers from around the world, especially women growers. We don't always get a chance to talk to many women growers. So it was great to have you on. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. We hope you'll thanks. come back. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Come you want. I'd invite you to stay on longer, but uh, I know it's super late where you are. I think what time is it there? Like 4 a.m. or something well, like that? Uh, five and uh, half uh, past five. Oh, yeah, 5, 5.30 in the morning where she is. So she's a trooper for joining us. So thank you again so much for getting up in the middle of the night and uh, and joining us on the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, take care. Thank you. Good luck. What a spirit. Wow. Right? Yeah, so I had a chance to talk to her for a minute, and I was like, oh, we got to get this other lady on the show. So she was super cool and uh I know uh, her accent's a little bit thick, but uh, she's she's super cool. And they're doing a bunch of really cool stuff at their place that nobody else is. Again, they're growing saffron. Nobody else is growing saffron in aquaponics, you know. So it's pretty cool to see people growing some some other really high value crops and not just doing uh, lettuce. So. Every newbie aquaponics grower talks about saffron, and nobody's right? doing it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, except they've like actually done it and documented like, it. Do you before. know you can grow saffron and wasabi? Grow <laughs> anything. Oh look, Dutch saved. It's a shaved Dutch now. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm a clean Spring boy. Here. Yep, I got too hot. I thought it was. All, <laughs> I thought my face lit up a little. It was all <laughs> shiny. Yeah. The reflection off my TV screen. I get a. I get ID'd when I uh, buy beer now. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> yeah. You know, kind of. You know. Uh, well, if I can, I'm legally blind, so yeah, I can see it. <laughs> How was your week, uh, Josh? Uh, it's pretty good. Been kicking ass. Um, I'm just looking at. I'm show you guys my my view here. Uh, I get I on my porch. I look at my garden. It's kind of a. It's awesome and it's a curse. So I just stare here, stand here. Um, so um, yeah, I'm two uh, two weeks in on that center row. And it's everything's looking good. Um, the pie hoe is 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 uh, starting to frost up, which is great. Um, I I, I kind of consider a good strain when they start start to get a little bit of frost on week two. You know, you can just see it right there coming out of the first first sets. Um, and so is this afgui, which I have I'm new to, so that's pretty cool. The Tahoe looks good, but uh, it hasn't really started to do to frost up yet. Which is fine. I mean, but uh, yeah. Uh, can you see? I'm, we're building. A, I don't think I can zoom in, but there, we're building a, uh, another hugel bed right there, and it goes the length of the whole thing all the way back there. So it's a hundred. It'll be a hundred feet, hundred ten feet long uh, by eight feet wide. So that that'll hopefully be done in the next couple of days, and then we'll plant that up with the rest of the plants. And be on our way. I'm cloning like a madman. I, I, I brought all my cloners. You can see a, that tarp setup I got right there between the shipping containers. I ran that between the two, and um, I can't walk down there right now, but I'm cloning outside. Oh, cool. Yeah, and it's it works. I, I, I got roots uh, in 10 days on uh, rapid rooters, and then I just set up my water cloners today and, and plugged it. You know a little bit of those, so yeah. So a lot of people out there are going to want to know: Are you going to are you going to wash those uh, in something like a room or anything after? Because there's a, a much more of an uh, opportunity for best to get into your medium since you're cloning outdoors. Or are you just going to run with them like they are? I just run with them like they are. Um, yeah. yeah, I have a good enough IPM program. Uh, with the bugs, thanks to Suzanne, that it, it all works out. Um, I, I even took in plants. This is this is a first for me, uh, oh, taking yeah, in yeah. plants with, with problems, with right. spider mites on them, and going, you know, fuck it. I got this. And uh, I did. I got it. It, it. I got it and nipped it in the butt. It cost me 400 bucks. 
of all the right bugs and I did it, which in the past I've spent up to, you know, $1,200 a run and, and still had problems, but, I, uh, get, getting the right ones and getting the whole round of everything. Uh, it took about two or three weeks. I had some aphids in there cause I was growing ryegrass, which they aphids overwinter on ryegrass. I just learned about that. So all those no-till people growing ryegrass like myself, that's, that's an immediate stop cease and desist on that one. <laughs> Well, that's for winter golf courses. That's for <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I took care of the spider mites, and uh, so it was cool, you know. So how'd you do that? Because everybody, we've all got our own perfect method, or we well, it was have... it's the it's the, the 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 round. So I bought the round uh, for everything. I'll see if I can rattle off the persimilis for spider mites, um, and they come in a vermiculite deal, uh, you know. That they're, they're in the this in vermiculite, so you got to buy these little square boxes that you hang on the on the branches, and then you pour that into the square boxes on every plant. Um, and then let's see, there's a couple I won't remember. Uh, there's the stratiolate stratiole laps for um, fungus gnats. There was another one for fungus gnats, and I can't remember the name. It starts with a D, and those ones actually destroyed it. They're these little hoppers. And they're they're long and skinny. Um, starts with a D. Um, let's see. I got lace wings, lace wing larva. Um, well, you pretty much bought the full package. Yeah, I got like six six varieties. I can't remember them all right now. But uh, that's I just keep re-upping on that uh, in a lesser dose, and um, it works. Uh, and then with the with the clones that you know, I do the same thing. Um, so I'm actually, I think I was kind of saying, I'm, I'm trying to get into to selling clones business. Yeah. Um, that's it's, awesome. yeah. And, and I, I've been telling people, you know, I'm going to charge, uh, you know, standard $10, um, but they're going to come fully loaded with bugs, like no problems, you know, fully loaded with beneficial bugs. Um, so it'll be, you know, an extra expense for me, but people will get really healthy plants and have no problems. Interesting. Because we usually isn't isn't I mean almost all beneficial bugs if if they don't have any uh, predator I mean uh, you know like not not good like if they don't have any pests to eat they leave and go somewhere else so totally totally so why would you put that extra investment in there I mean I'm just uh, you know just trying to iron it out a little bit well it just it feels like a guarantee for me you know all right good enough as long as you're willing to you know spend the money and put the effort into it. It's yeah. Not- and I, I think that, you know, with the, the seed sifting that I'm doing, um, I'm, you know, I'm just going to be really exclusive about it and work really hard to ma- maintain that I'm putting out a really high quality, you know, sifting really well and, and selecting very arduously. And then when I put it out, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be fire, you know? So, uh, I just want to build that reputation and I, I feel like I've, I've, I've been able to do it for myself and, and, and on a smaller scale, but, to just be able to do that and then have that, you know, it's like a guarantee. It's like, Hey, they're with the, you know, people will get worried because people get worried about being outdoors. Just like you said, they get worried about greenhouse. Mm-hmm. And so it's like a guarantee. It's like, no, no, you know, number one, come in my greenhouse and look at the flowers, you know, and look at the plants. And then num- number two, like I'm going to dose them with all this stuff. So there's no way. Yeah. Well, I've learned to keep people behind a, behind a protective plastic look at stuff because otherwise they'll drag they could drag in something that'll infect your whole greenhouse yeah watch out yeah. letting go in there looking around they might have traipsed through something in their backyard that will destroy everything in there i agree but i think in the beginning i'm gonna have to um give on that just to get some sales going you know and then once i have people using the genetics uh they'll you know feeling good about it hopefully well, um, just that, you, you know, know let through the whole greenhouse is what i'm trying to say get yeah them. yeah get up kind of close and personal with it like you know but not that close or through it kind of thing you know protect yourself yeah no that's that's a good point yeah yeah but yeah lose i lost a whole bunch of crop over over that kind of thing before so um it wasn't cannabis crop but crop is crop you know and yeah the hard way about you know and and even going to somebody else's greenhouse you if you get a business like that you don't need to go to anybody else's greenhouse and i'm not lecturing josh here folks we're just trying to yeah make understand the importance of having 
your stuff put away and, and keep it to yourself, not let everybody come through there or don't go to another greenhouse where they may have a, a environmental problem or pest problem and you pick it up on your clothes and then go back to run into your greenhouse that night and the next week you got an infestation. Right. Well, and, and you know, uh, I guess a little more transparency too on this thing is I am highly contemplating uh, a standard SOP of you, uh, dipping in stuff oil X on my cuts. Um, which I am going back and forth on that almost weekly. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of the one, on one hand, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. Like you gotta have everything really fucking dialed and it starts at the beginning. So if I can dip them in a, in an organic oil, um, in the beginning and I'm just putting it on a little part of the plant that I'll never end up harvesting, never end up, no one's ever smoking that, you know what I mean? It, that's all long gone, long, long gone by the time we're even flowering. And then I can add the beneficials um, to prevent anything else, you know, the, the maybe two, 3% that might slip through. Um, but I, I don't know. I have the other end. So the other end of it is like, it's a, it's an oil and it's a petrochemical. Every, even though it's organic certified and on the armory list, it's, it's, uh, it, I believe it's petroleum based. I, I'm not exactly sure, but so it's one of those, you know, well, that's the same thing, isn't that the same argument with pyrethrum, even though it's... Uh, yeah, like, and, and I, and I want to say, like, if it was just me running the farm and selling flowers, you know, or, or product, uh, I, don't, I don't think I would go there. I, I haven't had to. I've, I've been able to, you know, do that just fine without having to use any, any sprays of any sort for years, um, except for I get into an you know, occasional deal. But um, it's trying to operate as a nursery... Uh, feels like a different deal like yeah I, I i i don't go to a lot of places where you see just fucking healthy plants all, all over the place i don't you know i, I really don't so that i'd like to, i'd like that to be the case you talking about cannabis yeah yeah strictly in that statement yeah i'm talking about cannabis strictly in that statement um, you know, people, you go into people and they have great flower rooms, you know, but, but, uh, to see really all the way through where you're just like, damn, dude, everything is vigorous, you know, it's impressive. And it's, it's very, very few and far between, very few and far between in my experience. Anyways, I'm, I'm rambling. No, no. Well, no, I know. I, <laughs> well, we covered something that a lot of people debate about all the time. And we just wiped it out right there. There's a segment right there talking about, you know, what you do or do not do uh, for your cloning, you know, methods in order to have high success and quality, healthy plants in the end. And so now, now there's a, we got a little segment we've got right there about it. It's great that you've got that going on. So I could question you about it. <laughs> no, and it's, it's a good topic. I, I, you know, like, go ahead, like Steve. The, like the sapphoil issue. Or was it sapphoil or what's it Su called? Sapphoil X. Sapphoil. Sapphoil. That's it. Yeah, what are you saying? Sorry. Well, like some states it's cool and some states it's not. And it's just oh, really? Annoying. I didn't realize that. That's yeah. another one of those borderline. Well, it's one of those things that should be, but it, it you know. So you like it or you don't like it? Let's hear oh, that. It's good. It's good. Okay. Yeah. From, uh, uh, you know, Suzanne, um, we, we got to try to get her on the show one of these days. She's going to oh, be hard, will. hard, she's, but, uh, she, once she gets she said, to know us more, she said she'd come <laughs> on the show. No, no, I talked to her. She said she'd come on the show, but she said she, it just has to be on a week, at, a week that she's at home. So it's just going to be a while. But so like her, her, her thing, she thinks, um, Botan, Botanagard, am I saying it right? Yeah. Botanagard is one of the safest products out there. And it's the only product that people can use that's safe for root aphids. And, and in fact, they don't have a, a, a pest, uh, beneficial insect that, that they have guaranteed that will control root aphids. So that's the go-to answer, um, for root aphids, which is a huge issue in the cannabis industry right now. Huge issue. Um, I, in the past three, it was four years ago. I, I threw, I had to like toss out, um, 24 lights worth of no-till beds that I'd been growing for three years because wow. I couldn't get it, get away. I just like, get, I just tossed it in the field and, and composted it for two years. And then I brought it back in and I was okay, but I had to like, just kind of walk away from it for a while, you know? 
We had really good luck. Um, so we had uh, root aphids in um, the showroom and the aquaponics source at one point because one of the co one of the employees there brought some plants in from a different source for the showroom, and they had root aphids on them. Well, we couldn't figure out how the hell you're going to get rid of the with the fish. And right. We ended up putting um, three different types of nematodes. I honestly don't remember which species was the one that worked, but it, they ended up within about two months. We couldn't find one. Yeah, so introducing so, them in the system. I think you know, and 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 the, the, that's the same thing that I heard too is that you can get the nematodes that help, but it they they won't work quickly though. It it, yeah, a long time. maybe, and you guys just dose and dose and dose and dose and be oh, diligent, no. uh, and it works. Well, we were yeah. doing one bag of nematodes per four by four bed. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll yeah. do it. <laughs> For those you know, Isn't there. that like two thousand square feet supposed yeah. to be, or something like that? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> All I know is we came in with like nu a biological nuclear weapons, and we, we I cleared that I cleared that server. Oh, oh man, that's a, yeah, that's that's pretty high concentration. <laughs> but it worked. I mean, we, we and it, I didn't have to worry about sprays. I didn't have to worry about any kind of like runoff or anyone's pet drinking from it and feeling sick, or you know their kid drinking from it and feeling sick. You know, it's totally safe. You know, that's the nice thing about it. That was neat. At least for that product, anyway. For those, you know, all your beneficial yeah. nematode products currently on the market that are sold, anyway. Now, there's some really good ones. Now, there's one in the UK that's specifically for slugs and snails. And nematodes would, uh, for slugs and snails. Yes. And that's I would cool. uh, really, 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 really like to find a way to get a hold of some of that in the US. And uh, so, yeah. So if anyone happens to know how, uh, a way to get those in the United States, please leave a comment in the video or the audio recording version of this. Uh, you will uh, help out many people in this industry on the West Coast. So yes. I have ducks in the U.S. Is that what you're saying? You can't find it here in the U.S.? No, not that I'm aware of. I don't know of anyone in the U.S. that will well, do that. I do have some people I know in, in, in uh, the Netherlands. You know, so maybe I could ask if if you will uh, email me the information of exactly uh, what you're looking for. Yeah, um, it's, find it. Yeah, it's some kind of weird slug thing. That's a nematode that kills them, and uh, I would totally be against using this in like a field, but I think it would be perfectly fine to use in like a closed loop system, like an aquaponic system or something, where you have no chance of it getting out. You know. Ah. That's it. okay. So this That's is like an advantage to the biocontrol options you have in an aquaponic system is that it's all just kept in a little thing and there's no way anything can hitchhike in or out of there. You know what I mean? It's all in a closed greenhouse or in a closed space. Nothing, you know, you don't have animals or birds or, you know, whatever coming in and out. What about your exhaust systems? You don't think you could pick up stuff and blow it outside that way? I just have to play devil's advocate, sorry. Oh, I have no idea. Well, no, no, no. I mean, for for a worm or something like that, I think you'd be fine. But again, it's oh. something, it's not, that it's legal. Like, it's on the legal list of um, okay. stuff yeah. for the U.S. It's not illegal, but uh, there's no one that imports them. And I don't know, I can't seem to find a vendor in the United States that has them. And that's what I'm trying to find is, who is the U.S. vendor for that species? And I can't, no one can seem to give me a right answer on that, so. Hmm. That's what I'm trying to find is whoever has the legal one that where, allowed where, to use in the United States. Where did it originate? I have no idea. Oh, you don't know that either. Okay. Yeah. I don't even there there was a the company that used to have the patent on it in the United States doesn't exist anymore. And uh I can't there's no real good rec I couldn't so the figure out the hell kill snails and slugs. It's a nematode. Hold on, yeah. I'll see if I can pull it up here. Oh, you do have it. Well, yeah, if you could place that or, or email me that, because I will contact some people I know, you know, in other places in the world and see if they've heard of anything or know anything about it and see if we can't, you know, get a network going and find it. Yeah, one second. That's. Oh, here it is. So it is called Nema Slug. Oh, Nema, well, that's pretty simple. <laughs> Nema slug, nematode slug killer. And yeah, you're right. So a large pack 
is a does a hundred and twenty five cube or square yards. <laughs> a small pack does fifty square yards. So when you're using one pack for four by four bed, you're definitely gonna kill them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'll and work. So the cool thing the cool thing was is that they survived a long time in the media bed and were like breeding and doing their thing in there and it was really good for like long term we didn't have any more thrips after that we didn't have there's a lot of other insects that we just stopped having problems with that were <laughs> no more fungus gnats and stuff like that anything that like laid its eggs or crawled across the media was just getting picked off by them it worked well Hmm, that's neat. Nema slug. Okay, there, everybody. There you go. But you can't find a distributor in the United States for Nema slug. Nope. Okay. Well, the I've... species is registered in the United States on like the registry of pest control or whatever, but I can't seem to find a vendor. Okay. I'll look into that too. You ch Did you check that company in Colorado? I don't want to mention their name because I have I don't a remember. relationship with them. They they carry a, a large variety of uh, beneficial insects. Anyway, I'll talk to you about that after the show. Sure. <laughs> Maybe we'll get them to sponsor us, and they can send us all a bunch of beneficial interest oh, and yeah. talk about them. You know. <laughs> Well, I could do, we could do like Rosie used to do on her show and talk about them and say, we'll never talk about you again unless you send us some product. You know? <laughs> oh, how about that? Roseanne got fired for saying, tweeting something. I'm sorry. It's in the middle. We're in the dead space. I'm, to I'm like totally not interested in any of that. Yeah. I just can't believe it. Though. It's just funny. You can't say enough, enough say things thing. to worry about in the weed world than to worry about stupid tablets. <laughs> No, it's the fact that somebody, anybody could in public now can say something wrong and get fired. You know, you can't. Oh, yeah, but it's just the whole, the whole over PCization of everything. Like, right. um, I think Bill Maher had a really good piece a couple of weeks ago about how, like, it's one thing to disagree with someone, but you don't have the right to not be offended. And, you know, just because you disagree with something doesn't mean you have to, like, try and fucking end someone's like in right or 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 shut, you know, just like some of the crazy shit that's been going on with some of these people being totally you know totally losing their jobs and stuff over really trivial things or you know a comment where they genuinely felt sorry afterwards or maybe just it was taken out of context or or whatever and i'm not this is in no way a defense of what she said i'm just saying there's other cases um uh, that were a little you know different than hers obviously um, that Bill Maher brought up the other day on his show, and I thought that was a really good uh, piece on it. But again, it's just everyone's got to yeah. stick up their ass, and everyone's looking for a reason to be offended these days. So you just have to kind of deal with it and move on. It just popped into my head because I've never been big on political correctness. I don't believe in it because I think it steps all over freedom of speech. And I think you have you do need to be passionate with people, but. I still don't see why you can't say what you want to. Some of uh, it's okay. And I thought, yeah. I don't know, I thought more about what Brett said on the show about, hey, like, fuck it. Like, just say what you want and see what happens. And yeah, I mean, he's right. Like, we should have, we should be a, a little less dainty. It was just kind of a, a little bit of a panic after uh, all the hard work we've put in trying not to. And I mean, it's the reason why we're broadcasting on, uh, on weedtv.com now. We ended up finding some great new people to work with and great new home over there which I'm super fucking stoked about and super happy to be there. So hi, everyone watching from weedtv.com. And, oh, yeah. um, and then we also had to make a separate channel just to be able to, to put the show together uh, over on YouTube and, and set up a private thing just so we can make it easy for the guests to still connect. So, you know, we don't have to rely on Skype or some of the other stuff that's a little bit more clunky uh, than, um, than this because Hangouts is a very good platform for just getting one of everyone into a, a chat room and, and, uh, you know, having the ability to speak on a good platform. So um, it still allows us an easy way to do it. It's just not quite like we had before, and it won't be for another two months, two and a half months. Uh, and then we'll still be on uh, weetv.com. Eventually, uh, whenever they kill off the channel, we'll just migrate completely. I'm still working on re-uploading all the videos over there. So once we re-upload everything completely, then we'll probably switch over entirely. But um, 
I just want to make sure we have everything uh, backed up everywhere that we're trying to go. So anyways, uh, thanks everyone. Um, oh, uh, what are you been up to Roger? Well, it's not a whole lot. I'm just working through the spring. Had a lot of rain lately. It's been kind of crazy over here. It's uh, gotten extremely hot. We've had humidity in about the 85% range for the past few days. It'd be 77 degrees out with 85% humidity. You can imagine what that feels like. Um, but not much. Uh, we're trying to catch up. We got, we're just doing what we can day by day. Uh, I actually, I was ready for this at the beginning of the show when you usually ask me what I'm up to. And now you're asking me now, and I'm going, now. Nah, I can't remember what I was going to actually tell you. I figured out something. But I, was, I thought it was a great show tonight. And um, as always, uh, we had a, a very interesting guest that did a, did a great job explaining what she does. And I like the fact that she explained, Julia explained a lot about how she does it the way it works for her family or, or her dad. She said, actually, she's not the expert. Her dad's the expert. Her, but she's involved in the company and and her own activism and and trying to and, and philanthropy and trying to help people in need and learn teach everybody how to grow food and all so i thought that was great because i mean that's after my own heart everything she said that they're trying to do and of course we don't have the refugees from africa and all that she's dealing with in italy and turkey and all those countries we're dealing with and i'm i, I hope i didn't offend anybody you know bringing that up because uh, I felt that she was passionate about it and it was something she was wanting to do. And it's, it's a little bit different spin on uh, politics and, and world events than so, you get here, you know? So I heard something the other day or today that was interesting. A guy told me to use, cause we're getting, we have a couple of mice in the, in the chicken coop and um, somebody's telling me about potato flakes and that potato flakes makes them super, super thirsty and makes them leave. And then when they drink, if they eat too much of it and they drink it, it like, screws them up somehow is that true is that not true something i had never heard before I think, and i thought sounded like a really good pretty natural way to get rid of mice and rats but my opinion is that sounds like the grits for for uh, fire ants if you pour uh, if you cover an ant a fire ant hill with with uh grits you let they all take them and they eat they take it and deep in their into their uh colonies and you wait and let it rain because it generally their colony they fill up and they've got these little areas where they can go and get out of the water. It's just like one of those magic. It's like the tunnels that people would live in in, in Vietnam and tunnels of Coochie or something where they had a living space, but it could flood. Well, once they eat the the grits, and then the water comes and they drink the water, they blow up from the grits expanding. And it and the grits also when it rains it clogs up their tunnels and just destroys the whole colony. Uh, so it could be possible because you talk about potato flakes. Or, what'd you say? But like so this guy told me it was potato flakes. This the Spanish guy told me it was potato flakes was like the thing that worked for them. Not like instant potato flakes. I mean, yeah, it, like instant potato okay. flakes. So that'd be dehydrated. So if they took it, yeah. they used food source and they drank water. They'd kind of get stuffed up. They just they, they'd blow up. It would just go. It would just it, you know expand. They would basically. Yeah be stopped up it would stop up their entire system so well, i, I thought it'd be something that i could use on the outside of the chicken coop and let the mice eat it and not have to worry about like the cat getting hurt or like you know anything well, else around because it would already have been expanded from the water so well, no, no, no. this this is all going to be out of reach from any creatures anyway it's just going to be just where the mice can get at it but it's just something yeah. that's safe. It's not like a poison where I have to worry about if the mouse dies from it and the cat eats it. You know, it's fine. You know what I mean? I think it'll work. I think it'll work. Yeah, because the the what what killed the 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 rat or the mouse is already going to have happened because it's expansion of the product. They yep. eat they eat the dehydrated product. They eat drink water and it goes and gets big and now they can't move. You know. Yep. Like if you ate a pound of rice and then and drank a gallon of water, you'd be screwed. You know? Yep. Oh, well, looks like we lost Dutch. Um. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to mention. So Dutch and I are um, uh, both going to be over at the Science of Regenerative Aquaponic Cultivation course. Uh, you can find that at regenerativeorganiccannabis.com. Uh, Elaine Ingham will be there. Susan Wainwright, Josh, um, Chris, uh, Chris Trump. Uh, Dr. Robert Faust, uh, myself, Ken Armstrong, and it'll be hosted at the Ouroboros Farms. Uh, you'll have an intimate uh, five days of uh, uh, three day session or three sessions a day of 
of uh, great knowledge on uh, microbes and biostimulants and uh, all different great kinds of things for for your aquaponics, especially if you're a commercial producer or you're doing you know any kind of advanced um, crops beyond uh, lettuce. Even if you're just a lettuce producer with a commercial operation, uh, can definitely be a, a, a lot of great info on there in that course. So definitely check that out, regenerative organic regenerative organic cannabis dot com. Uh, even though it's not specific cannabis specific, it is uh, just about um, you know, all kinds of crops, not specifically cannabis, but we will talk quite a bit about cannabis as well. And that's in uh, July, right? Yep, that's in July, on July 16th through the 20th. And then on July 21st, we will be throwing the uh, the Dew Grows Bay Area uh, Nug Throwdown uh, nearby, uh, very close to Half Moon Bay uh, on the, uh, the 21st of July. So if you're interested in that, um, go check out the dogrows.com website. Please do dogrows.com slash DGC Cup. Uh, if they haven't uh, updated it yet, they will be shortly. Um, should be, but I'm not sure if they've made it live yet. Anyways, um, so be sure to check those events out. Uh, I know the uh, DGC Cup event is very cheap. So if you're looking to come down and party, if you can't afford to come down for the week, definitely come down for Saturday and uh you know, come meet the crew, uh, come meet a bunch of other aquaponic uh, gardeners in person. It'll be a great time. Yeah. And then uh, we also have the, um, my uh, next aquaponic cannabis class is coming up on June 22nd and 23rd, or maybe it's 23rd and 24th, one or the other, whichever one of those is Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I believe it's 23rd and 24th. And then on June 23rd, we actually have a CBD infused dinner uh, for uh, planned at, um, uh, CBD infused dinner planned at uh, Ouroboros Farms. Uh, so you'll have a, a farm to table dinner, but it'll have CBD in it, uh, which is pretty cool. So uh, we don't let us do uh, cannabis yet there, but um, you know, as times change, hopefully after November, we'll be able to uh, to get a, an event permit so that we can actually do THC. But um, for the time being, we can still legally do CBD, which is cool. So um, yeah, please, uh, you know, definitely check that out too. If you aren't able to come to the class, uh, feel free to come and, see, you know, kind of get a cool farm experience, a little bit of a tour and, uh, and uh, see the farm and have, you know, great farm to table dinner from not only our farm or not my farm, but Ken Armstrong's farm at Orboros, uh, uh, but also um, uh, other local farmers in the area. So, and that's uh, put on by the, uh, the chef that was actually on the show. So uh, Chef Norman couple episodes ago so oh so you better tell his name you know yep. chef, norman. chef norman yeah that was pretty neat too yepers so that'll be cool and then uh i know we have there's other courses as well up on uh Ouroboros, um farms.com and then in august august third second through fifth is the next commercial aquaponics class uh over at Ouroboros farms as well with myself ken armstrong and charlie schultz so cool yep and I want to say y'all need to come. We've got some great sales going over at ilovegrowingmarijuana.com on seed packages and starters using our own our own commercial nutrients, which you might want to try. If you're not into just aquaponics, you're a beginner, you might be able to try that. Um, and yeah, definitely, definitely check, definitely check them out for that kind of stuff. Um, yep. That's some of the most highest quality. Not the, I'm not going to say we've got the best seeds or best genetics because we've got friends that are on the show and friends that we know all around the world. But we've got some of the highest quality genetics I've ever seen in my 13 years working in the cannabis industry <clears throat> across the world. Um, and it's just incredible. We get great feedback. In fact, you mentioned Dude Grows. Dude, dude bought some of our seeds and he hadn't grown them yet, though. So I don't know what he's going to say. But I'm sure... Say I'll, have to, I'll have to find out from him uh, when he's when he's all set. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm trying yeah. to think. Is there anybody else? I was trying to think. There's oh, uh, shout out to Marty too. He wasn't able to make it. His his channel is AP Meds. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, we also uh, we got another possibly a second show each week in the works. We're we're talking to some people. Awesome. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, another another person that's going to help us host as well. And uh, we might be we're looking to do maybe a, a second day of the week so that we get a little bit more content out to you guys. And then maybe do a show that's a little bit more. Um, we have this one for more uh, organic hydro and aquaponics and things that would apply to that as well. But uh, maybe to have the other one be a little bit more soil specific. Maybe also have guests that we can't get on quite on, on Thursdays as well. Uh, but uh, we're kicking around that idea. So if you think that's a good idea, let us know in the comments of whichever platform you read this in and I will read them. 
And did we have any comments or questions in, in chat we needed to answer before we get off? Um, no, we didn't have a ton of questions with with uh, with Julia earlier. Um, no, it looks like we're good at the moment. But um, thank, thanks, uh, everyone, for watching and everyone for listening, if you're listening to the audio version or watching the video version. And uh, we will uh, be back again with you guys next Thursday. Um, I don't remember who the guest is. I have somebody lined up, but I don't remember this week. Sorry, a little too much weed. I've been drinking less and smoking more, so it's good. <laughs> That's always good. Yeah. Anyways, uh, take care, everyone, and have a great weekend. Cheers. See you next week.